rhythmic sounds of African voices harmoniously singing a cappella in a call and response, or accompanied by keyboards, synthesizers or drums is a distinct feature of South African music. The unique tradition of South African gospel music is one that has been orally passed down from generation to generation and remains a vibrant component of South African life today. Not only does it bless those who listen but it is also a form of worship that helps many give glory and praise to the Lord. To acquire a greater understanding of this music we need to recognize how it came about, how it developed over the years and what the music and text means to South Africans even today. Western church traditional music was first introduced to South Africans through the traveling Dutch and English missionaries who came as Western colonization spread to the southernmost part of the African continent in the mid-16th century. This church music of the 1500s to the 1700s was primarily that of the Catholic tradition, but it soon transformed into the secular repertoire of folk songs found in the Dutch Reformed Church in the mid-1800s. However, this style of traditional church music didn't last long and in the 1920s the Dutch Reformed Church developed into the Afrikaans Church, whose worship style was characterized as more charismatic. In the 1870s, another charismatic movement that bloomed in South Africa was the African-American gospel songs, freedom songs, spirituals and folk mass music. This music was primarily introduced by mission groups of the 1830s to the province of KwaZulu-Natal and the Zulu Kingdom. At this time disease had made most parts of Africa inaccessible to European preachers but the absence of the deadliest fevers in this area of South Africa and the presence of hundreds of thousands of unconverted people attracted missionaries from all over Germany, Scandinavia, France, Britain and the United States. This movement created a plethora of hymn and chorus books, particularly the Sounds of Living Waters volumes, which were known to be popular and non-elitist. The missionaries introduced these hymns, which were intended to be sung in precisely the same four-part harmony year after year. When missionaries presented the subject of singing to the ruler in the Zulu Kingdom, King Dingan, in 1835, they were amazed that their previously taught songs had been altered into a new form more suited to the likes of the king. Alan Gardiner, an ex-naval officer turned freelance missionary, also offered his work, the book, which had made the British a great people, promising that it would teach the Zulu to know the words that they might become greater. Instrumentation during this time was changed from strictly the organ of traditional Catholic music and was replaced by guitars and piano. The music landscape changed even further as visiting African-American choirs of the 1980s performed African music, sung in the English medium, in white Afrikaans churches that once tried to keep them out during apartheid. Much of the most transformational and moving South African choral music of recent times has grown out of the Black African resistance movement and the freedom songs. These songs are noted for retaining the timeless, soaring quality of the spirituals sung by slaves in the American South. Many of the hymns that were sung were based on songs from the Western world. English missionaries were busy at work in KwaZulu-Natal, where they devoted considerable effort into the translation and printing of hymns from English to the Zulu or Corsa language. The Methodist missionaries completed a translation of 60 songs. What mattered to the English was not the theology embodied in the hymns, but the material system of printing music and the four-part harmonies in which they were set. Although new elements, such as the ethnic African marimba, were favored by the native people, these were not often used in African worship. Interestingly, in the current choral tradition and education a transition from the established sol -fa method, which has been passed down from generation to generation for centuries is changing now to educate students to learn staff notation. South African gospel music is distinctly known for how it truly reflects the lives of the Africans who sing it. 
Duxini Zaba, a 34-year-old lead singer of Birdville Green Lovers a Zulu a cappella choral group, points out that Africans sing about their lives or about the community, tackling issues and challenges facing the country, like HIV and AIDS, the youth, unemployment, and xenophobia. He, along with many other South Africans, believe that singing these songs makes them strong. One of the most popular styles of music that has developed from the roots of South African gospel music and that has enabled Africans to strengthen each other through singing is the style of Isakadamiya, a Zulu word that translates as in a stalking way or cat-like. Isakadamiya had its beginnings in the South African mines at the turn of the 20th century, where Zulu men worked far from their homes, living in hostels or all male dorms, and would sing to each other as a form of entertainment. Often when they were lonely, remembering home and their families, the now popular music style, Isakadamiya, was also inspired by American gospel and minstrel singing. Even today, you can see that these songs have a gospel vibe and the message of a higher purpose. The beauty of South African gospel music is in its ability to cross cultural barriers, to communicate the needs and desires of the community group and allow people to express themselves and strengthen both themselves and the community around them. One of these many African gospel songs that I have learned over the past dozen years and will cherish in my heart for many years to come is the song titled Igama Lenkosi, which translates in English to the name of the Lord. The first verse goes something like this. These words translate into the beautiful scripture that King Solomon wrote in Proverbs 18 verse 10, saying that the name of the Lord is a refuge, whoever hides in him will be safe. This portion of scripture displays one of the wonderful images in God's word of how we, as believers, can find strength and refuge in life by seeking the Lord and resting in his protection of our lives from the evils of the world. The second verse goes a little bit like this. When we translate the lyrics from Zulu to English, we'd realize that they are very similar to the previous verse, quoting many of King David's psalms, particularly the first few verses of Psalms 27, where it says that whoever abides in it, the name of the Lord, will not fear despite the storms of life. It is so easy for us as believers to become anxious when the difficulties of life arise and we forget his promise that we can be guarded and safe as we abide in the Lord and he in us. The final verse of this gospel song sounds like this. Thank you.
This also translates into English from the Psalms, such as Psalm 67 and Psalm 148, commanding, Let all people praise him, and let the angels praise him. There is no beautiful name such as his. This phrasing clearly shows us, as Christ's followers, that the Lord is sovereign over all creation and deserves all the glory, honor, and praise from every living thing in both the heavens and the earth. The line... which means there is no beautiful name such as his, is repeated as the chorus, reiterating the truth in scripture and passages such as Philippians 2, verse 9 to 11, where Paul explains that through Christ's humility, death, and resurrection, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, Every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. As with many South African hymns and gospel songs, the chorus is repeated, but now with different words, which sound as follows. <laughs> Essentially, the singers are proclaiming the words of the seraphim in Isaiah 6 verse 3 and that of the four living creatures with six wings in Revelation 4 verse 8 as they worship to the Lord, You are holy, you are holy, God Almighty, you are holy. God Almighty is truly set apart and high above any other living thing as well as truly beyond our expansive imagination and comprehension. He fully deserves our undivided devotion, adoration, and praise as we stand in awe of him and are overwhelmed by his immeasurable love for us. To conclude this wonderful truth, singers return to repeat the previous verse and chorus, praising. <laughs> For one final time, they repeat that final chorus line, exclaiming, There is no more beautiful name than the name of Jesus, which has set us free and allowed us to have an intimate relationship with God. And it is this same good news by which we are commissioned by Christ to share with those in need around us.